Hey guys, what's up? Bye, Sectatron here from One Hype Gazette, here with the next video, and this one is focused on how to build an effective anti three star base at Town Hall 9. Gonna be an in depth look at everything that makes a good base. We're gonna start small, take a look at different concepts, different uh, types of structures, and different arrangements of defenses on a small scale. Then we'll combine them into an entire base. We'll take a look at an example and attack on it. I'll give you guys the full picture of how a base is designed on a microscopic and a macroscopic uh, level. So we're gonna get started right here, not waste any time with one very key uh, part of a base, which is an expo island. That's the best term I know to use. It's where the expo is surrounded by a two tile moat and then uh, some walls beyond that. And then oftentimes it's on the corner of a base with these two compartments, um, most of the time having wizard towers, archer towers, sometimes cannons, but uh, typically defenses in those uh, compartments. And you can just imagine the base continuing off uh, towards the right, but this is like the left side of a base. And this is a very effective thing to do because it really maximizes the expo. The expo is your best defense. It has by far the most hit points, and I believe it does slightly more damage uh, than an archer tower and has slightly more range than an archer tower as well. So it is your best defense, and of course you're gonna wanna put it on air and ground um, because you wanna be able to defend against air uh, at your full capacity. But what this does is it maximizes the reach of the expo without it being uh, targeted by a queen on a queen walk. So um, believe it or not, nowhere can the queen go without entering the base. She cannot target the expo. So even if she stands right here where this little wall segment is, she can't reach the expo over that um, diagonal. Um, and you may think it looks like she can, but actually no, she can't. If she does a walk starting by this mortar then walks down around the outside like this, she will not target that expo. But you can see how much range it has beyond the walls. Pretty much anywhere beyond the walls, it has range. Keeping in mind the base continu would continue like that and like that, and there would be buildings inside here just so you guys can see exactly what's going on. So this is like the left side of a base, um, but this is maximizing the expo reach for targeting the queen on queen walks, and just in general, it's giving your expo a whole lot of defenses it can cover and target. It's also a very good compartment against hogs, the reason being it's difficult to heal the entire area here. If you keep in mind these five defenses, the expo, the two archer towers, and the wizard towers, a heal spell can't cover all of that, so when they drop the hogs, they have a difficult decision. If Pretend these mortars aren't here for a second. If they spread out the hogs on all of these defenses, they can only heal basically one side, either this and this or this and this, and then they don't know where the giant bombs are gonna be. I like to put like singles on one side of these expos to basically try to kill uh, one group coming in. They don't know which side it's coming from, and if they don't drop enough hogs, these wizard towers and archer towers can take them out. You can even put a spring trap uh, between them. That'll typically get at least like two, one or two hogs, sometimes three if you're lucky. Um, I like using mortars too because on La Luna attacks, you don't want people to directly target too many of your air targeting defenses. You don't want them to target your wizard towers, your archer towers um, too easily. So mortars can stop that by kind of forcing them to all uh, group up and take out the mortar before they move in. They also set up a nice spring trap right behind them. So very good compartment, maximizes the expo's reach without it being able to be targeted by a queen. Uh, pretty solid against hogs as well. As I said, it spreads them out, forces an awkward heal, and against La Loon, if you drop these mortars out there, it'll really trip up the loon pathing and make it difficult to get into the expo. Sometimes even putting a Tesla here can be an effective thing to do um, to make them just continue off away from the expo. So that's one thing. Let's take a look at a few more uh, types of structures on more of a microscopic level. So now we're going to talk a little bit about air defense placement and how you want to structure them. Uh, the first thing that uh, I want to say is that air defenses should always be overlapping. You shouldn't have any air defenses that are not within range of others. They should all have each other's back, so to speak. So you don't want a lava hound to be able to sit on top of one of your air defenses without engaging another one. Uh, the reason is 
that is allowing an attacker to take their time and make their way around the base with hounds and loons. You want to force them to deploy their loons quickly and have their hounds just be pummeled by uh, by your air defenses. So uh, that's kind of a personal preference. Not everyone does this strategy, um, but that's my recommendation uh, when you're building your bases is that you keep the air defenses in groups of twos or even keep them all together on one side of the base. That can work sometimes. Uh, it does depend a little bit on your structure of your base. Just make sure you keep your queen away from the air defenses. So if this is a base here, uh, these are pretty good structures. Now, you got to be careful. You don't want a suicide queen to get too much value. Um, it is okay if the queen uh, trades for one air defense. So if you put some like storages here, um, the queen probably still can shoot her way up and eventually take out uh, this air defense here before she goes down for a suicide trade on that air defense. But that's okay. That's a trade you can make and it's not going to hurt your base too much. You just got to be careful that both air defenses aren't accessible by like a suicide queen or something. So if they are both reachable from, from the outside, you want to make sure she can't shoot um, this one from over here. Same as she can't shoot this one from over here. So they're, that, they're far enough away from the wall on the other side that they can't be shot um, from the long angle. Also put storages, stuff like that. Don't make it easy to trade for your air defenses. The top is another uh, good formation. Um, you gotta be careful about the queen being wall breaked in and having like a suicide queen take out both these air defenses. So just put storages there um, and have some uh, other DPS somewhere around here. Cannons are good by air defenses because of course um, you don't want to put too many air targeting defenses by your air defenses because that will allow people to get great value if they use a kill squad. So surround them by cannons. Uh, keep your queen away if you can. So maybe over here with some buffers uh, in between her and these air defenses and you know put some damage there as well. Some ground skellies. Uh, whatever you want to do, but don't put her too close to especially two air defenses. And if she is somewhat close, it should be like a lot of cannons and mortars or whatever, not stuff that's going to be uh, important for defending against balloons. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to say. Um, turning the attention back to ground for a moment, um, the question that is possibly even a better question um, is, and you guys might be wondering, is should I put giant bombs by these air defenses? Should I put spring traps there? Uh, the answer is giant bombs in my opinion. Uh, the air defense cannon areas on your base are a good place for giant bombs. Uh, the reason is that there's not going to be as many hogs in that area and they probably don't want to use a heal. As long as you keep them relatively sparse on damage, just like two cannons guarding a, a set of air defenses, they're probably not going to be uh, having a heal allocated for that area. So giant bombs are a great place to really wound those hogs and have the cannons, which do a fair amount of DPS, uh, finish them off over there. You don't want to use the spring traps because there's not um, typically enough, like a, enough of a group of hogs there to get like three to a spring trap and really get the best value for the spring traps. I'll show in just a moment where to put the spring traps, where to get the most value with them. But this area I think is a good place for giant bombs. Of course, you might want to keep some in your core to defend against the big control attacks that use three golems, but we'll talk about that as well. So um, I guess to keep it short summary, keep those air defenses somewhat protected in groups to cover each other, keep them away from the queen and away from other value uh, that could be gotten by a kill squad, keep cannons near them to guard them, and giant bombs, not as many spring traps for ground troops. So next we're gonna talk about Tesla farms because they are very important to a Town Hall 9 base and the element of surprise that they bring can often ruin an attack. And of course at Town Hall 9, the main priority should be defending a fresh attack where you have not been attacked before. Any other um, defenses you have are bonuses, but the first priority is not getting three-starred on the first attack on your base. And that's where the Tesla farm is important. Uh, you might ask, should you use a Tesla farm? I would say most of the time, yes, because Teslas on their own typically aren't enough to spoil or to foil any one part of a plan, but together they are enough of a surprise and a threat. They can really ruin some attacks, especially that first attack on your base. Now, should you use a, a troll Tesla in the corner of the base? I'd say often, yeah, it's a good idea, uh, but you still might want to have a three Tesla 
test the farm. Three is still enough to do quite a bit of damage to an attack if you want to put the fourth in a corner. Now this uh, example here has all four Teslas uh, in a Tesla farm and where you place your farm is important because a kill squad is much better at killing a Tesla farm than, for example, a kill squad um, or hogs or loons are. You want the defense targeting troops, the um, the non kill squad troops essentially to encounter your Tesla farm. That's what it's intended to kill. So you want to put it in a place where the kill squad's not likely to enter from. This base, if we can imagine it, imagine it being like half of the base, the bottom left, the rest of the base would be up here somewhere. Um, it, that's a great place to put it because there's no reason to send a kill squad directly in there. No one's going to drop a jump right there and try to get into these storage areas um, because there's too much flanking on either side. So that's a good place to have it in like a little inlet next to your uh, expo island if you have one. That way you can be somewhat confident that an attacker is not going to hit it head on with their kill squad. That way it'll be left for the hogs. And now here is where you want to put your spring traps because you want to, they're going to heal over the Tesla farm if they have a heal. So the giant bomb is not going to be as effective because it does a momentary uh, amount of damage and then they get healed back up over it typically. That's where the uh, spring trap comes in because they're probably going to go heavy on the hogs here if they detect the Tesla farm uh, in that area and the spring traps will thin out the hogs enough for the Teslas to all start to target hogs at once and get them taken out despite any heal spell. So you want to thin them out with the spring traps in these high DPS locations. The giant bombs are for lower DPS locations where you can kill a group of like three or four hogs if they get finished off by a cannon or something. So good place for uh, spring traps. Typically two spring traps is good, sometimes three. Uh, but no more than three in one test the farm. I'd say two is a good number for the most part. Now, for defending air, you typically want to keep them out of range of an air defense. So this example, um, the air defense should probably be moved over or the test the farm should be moved one or the other because if a lava hound can tank your test the farm, you might be in some trouble because the balloons will take it out really fast if the nothing is attacking them. Uh, typically, all you need is like one um, red air bomb just to weaken some balloons as they come in. And you can even put an air skelly there. Now, I recommend using ground skeleton traps, but if you want to use air, if you're concerned about that, and uh, this, the Tesla farm is a great place to put that um, to help kill those balloons. Notice how it's not too close to a whole lot of other defenses. Um, air or ground defenses. That way it's not going to be an area that the kill squad's most likely to go or an area they're already bringing a lot of troops and a lot of spells for. It's supposed to be unexpected and it should go without saying that there should be multiple places on your base where it could be feasible a test the farm is because the element of surprise is so important and if your base basically communicates where the test the farm is by the gaps um, you're going to be in some trouble. So have on the opposite side the same suspicious looking area in this little inlet of the base. If you have a symmetrical base, do something to make there be an element of doubt as to where a Tesla farm might be located. But those are the basics. Tesla farms, of course, very effective as are troll Teslas in some situations. So those were some concrete things you can do to your base right now, some important different setups you want to have, you want to be thinking about in each of those three little segments. Now, we're going to take things at a bigger picture, talk about a base we faced in war that I think does a great job with all of these concepts, a very strong base, and we'll even take a look at one replay on it to show um, how it can defend in war. So uh, you can th see right away it has the expo compartments, and there are some pretty good places for Tesla farms um, to make some improvements to it. There should be um, the possibility of a Tesla farm down here. Um, I think the actual Tesla farm ended up being here, which is a great place for it. Like I said, adjacent to this Expo Island is a good place to have your Tesla farm. It makes it for an awkward hog pathing, especially with some dead space in here. They kind of go in like a weird loop. And it's um, you can put some spring traps in between the Teslas if they're um, in that single file file line. So there should be a place down here and down here. I guess there's kind of a place, but possibly could make it more realistic. There'd be a Tesla farm in other places, maybe a little bit too conspicuous, but up here as well. I guess there's a, a good chance it could be there. So um, pretty good uh, Tesla farm location and moving on to some other things on this base, the air sweepers 
they are pointed for the most part at this area. They should not be pointed at the air defenses because the do or die moment, the make or break for the attack does not happen at the air defenses when we're talking about a Laloon attack. It happens on the wizard towers, the archer towers. That's where you have to win your battles. So I recommend your air sweepers facing those areas, pushing the balloons back because it is in those areas where the air defenses are not, where the balloons are going to be targeted directly by archer towers, wizard towers, uh, traps, and that's where you want them to be pushed back so they're exposed for longer. Because when it comes to this area, as long as there's like one haste spell, the loons will get the job done and they're not taking any damage because the hounds will be tanking. But in an area over here, um, time does matter much more because every second the loons are getting pushed back is a second they're taking damage from a defense. So I would highly recommend your air sweepers covering, um, it depends on the base, but the areas that have the high anti-air defenses, particularly these expo islands on the sides of the base. Okay, um, in terms of the control attacks, such as a three golem stoned hobo or a heavy kill squad laloon attack, an attack that goes deep into the base with a golem based kill squad, the main thing you want to do to defend that is to decentralize your base. You can see in the core of the base here, there's some bomb towers. There's one, or just one bomb tower, I guess, uh, the queen to keep her protected. But there's really a lot of empty space, a lot of uh, storages, and they're big enough compartments that you can't really jump over any of them. Uh, this compartment can't be jumped any direction, neither can this one. And the one right in the middle can only be jumped across, but not to um, some of the meaningful areas that have defenses like that. So that's the main thing you want to do is decentralize your core. Otherwise, you could get hard, hit hard by some three uh, golem stone hobo attacks, whatever it is. Um, you don't want to make that too easy for the attacker. I like putting the bomb tower towards the middle. It's just, it's not that great of a defense, really, besides that like suicide bomb it does once it gets uh, destroyed. So um, it can kill hogs, but typically if you put it towards the outside of the base to try to kill hogs, the attacker's going to plan for it. It's basically a giant bomb that you know it's there, so might as well put it in the core where they don't really have a whole lot of control over what happens. A lot of randomness happens when a kill squad enters the core. Um, I like the bomb tower in the middle, and in terms of your giant bomb placement in general, um, like I said, you can throw an attacker off by putting them in these areas if they heal the wrong angle. Um, you might get a, a favorable giant bomb to kill some hogs. Also, putting them up here is um, probably the best idea, in my opinion, if you have a gap by your air defenses, because that's an area they're not expecting there to be a whole lot of trouble for the hogs. They probably don't have a heal spell for that area. In the spring traps, test the farms and areas like this that have high damage that they're probably going to try to heal over. This way you negate the heal by thinning out the hogs, making uh, the individual hogs get targeted as their numbers thin out. In terms of the king, oftentimes you want to have him kind of guarding the queen, so she's kind of a little bit offset here. The king guards this area. Um, that way it's harder to send something in to kill the queen for an air attack. Um, of course, there's lots of variations you can do. So. That's pretty much all I can say. Um, there's so much you could say about this, and I look forward to seeing you guys' comments. Let's take a look at an attack on this base uh, to give you guys some further insight. So the attacker here is Iceman, and he is bringing a Queen Walk Hog attack. That's what we'll be watching on this base. It is not successful. Wish I had more attacks to show, but just was able to record this one um, on base number 18 here from the last war. Like I said, a very good example of a base that has good fundamentals in terms of everything I showed in this video. And one thing that I neglected to say, but it's very important, is not just having the expo uh, islands there to defend queen walks, but every part of the base should have one point defense that cannot be reached by the queen on the outside of the base, but can still shoot the queen. So on this base, left and right sides has the expos uh, which can get some great value because they tar they can cover so much of the outside of the base without the queen being able to actually target them herself. But also, the top and the bottom, there's these cannons by the air defenses. The cannon farther in is able to shoot the queen, 
but the queen cannot quite reach it. It is four tiles away from the wall on the outside of the base, which is far enough to make it so the queen can't reach it. So every part of the base should have at least one point defense that can kind of guard everything else against a queen walk. And if the queen doesn't enter the base, it can target her, but she can't reach it. That's the important thing. Now, there's kind of a weird uh, wall segment or like little line of walls that runs on the outside of the base right here, which actually forced the use of a jump spell, which was interesting. Um, but this is somewhat of a control attack. And by control attack, I mean they're bringing uh, a, a golem-based kill squad to try to get into the base and control the middle, then use defensive targeting on the outside. It was one golem, the king, and some bowlers. Not a huge kill squad, but... Um, enough to kind of make it a control attack. And this base defended it well because it's decentralized. There's a lot of defenses that are flanking the kill squad as it enters. It's difficult to kind of get into the middle of the base and control it there because the defenses will be shooting everything in the core, yet they're removed from the core. The defenses are decentralized for the most part. Now, the defender here had a giant bomb in the Tesla farm. I don't recommend that because as you can see, uh, as you can see uh, the giant bomb was healed over People are typically going to use a heal spell over a Tesla farm or a high DPS area. So a giant bomb there is not going to be quite as effective as spring traps would be. That's kind of the one critique I would have. But this base uh, did a very good job defending this one attack here. And I think it's a good example. Hopefully this video helped. Um, this is not going to be the exact base you should use. But these principles should be in your base, at least some of them. You can be creative, see what works. But these are the basics for how to create a good, solid, anti-three-star base at Town Hall 9 uh, for your clan wars. So that'll do it. Let me know what you think in the comments below, anything you want to add. I look forward to seeing what you guys have to say as well. Um, you guys always have some good insight that I uh, forget to put in my videos. So that will do it. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sectatron out.